Hi there, so this is the first in the series on creating a database from the ground up. Um, why do this series? Well, people use databases all the time, even programmers like myself who have been programming for years. But we, a lot of people don't really understand how they operate, how each database is different, even though it might, on the face of it, look like exactly the same design, exactly the same layout. So all relational DBs are not created equal, for example. Um, and you know understanding the design choices made in those databases is fundamental to understanding the performance the security and the reliability of that database so uh, by building one from the ground up we, we get to see the trade-offs that these database providers have to you know take and they're all valid but it's about knowing which tool is right for which job uh, what we'll also do though is because we're going to write this in c plus plus um i'll also make sure we use modern c plus plus so c plus plus 11 to 20 um, we will not use any of the old C++ 98 stuff at all, if we can help it. Uh, and we'll mix in topics on the latest C++ changes into each one of these videos as well. So if you're learning C++ and you're fed up of looking at really old stuff, this course will have all of the, the latest stuff in it and we'll add that over time and explain the differences over time. Today though, we're going to create a very basic shell database uh, with tests and a command line interface. Uh, we're going to use very basic C++ with no advanced features, so you'll see some very bad C++ today, but that is by design. I'm trying to keep it simple for people who are not necessarily experts in C++. So there's going to be lots of, lots. Of, if you're a C++ programmer, this is going to annoy you, <laughs> okay? So just bear with me on it. I know it's not quite perfect, but that is deliberate. Um, but why me? Why am I doing this? Well, I've been writing code for 30 years since I was like eight years old. I've uh, been a professional computer scientist for 20 years now and I've worked for a whole variety of different large and small computer companies from IBM to Mark Logic, now at VMware, Pivotal Labs. Um, but I've also wrote, written books on NoSQL databases, so I wrote NoSQL for Dummies. And I've also written books, uh, I've co-authored books on enterprise content management and business process management. Uh, and I wanted an interesting topic for a blog that I could add to over time uh, and a good excuse to kind of perfect my skills in the latest C++ 17 and 20 really. So uh, this is, I figured rather than just do this in my own time, I might as well record this for posterity and share it with you people. So uh, if you like it, click subscribe and uh, if you've got any pointers or any ideas, do let me know. But for now, let's dive on in. So I've already created a shell GitHub project here. Uh, as you can see, it's very shell-like. Um, incidentally, I chose the Git ignore template for Qt. I'm going to use Qt Creator, um, and the license I've chosen is MIT. So this is very basic. So I'm just going to copy that link. I use uh, SSH in a particular way. So I'll just clone. What's it? No, uh, Git clone that. So have a quick look and as you can see cut completely blank so in Qt creator what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a uh, new file i'll put it i'm going to choose a non-qt project plain actually no other project subders project and the reason for all this is because i'm going to have many projects within a project so this is kind of non-obvious for anybody who's not used Qt creator before but if you create a subders project it creates a top level project and then you can add projects within it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to call this ground up DB. Make sure I spelled that right. I kept spelling it wrong the other day. And I'm going to create that in here. Project already exists. That's absolutely correct. So ground up DB. Named it right this time. I'm going to choose just my desktop. I'm not going to choose cute because I want this to uh, be specific. I'm going to add it to version control. Done. So that's created my base project, as you can see in the background the template what i'm also going to do is create now the uh, top level project so i'm going to create a uh, c++ uh, library project here i'm going to call this ground up db as well notice that it's creating that within here though so it's the same name but within the project i'm not calling this lib ground up db and the reason for all that is because otherwise my binary would be called lib lib ground up db and that's really annoying the first five times you do it so just call it the name you want it. Now I'm going to use QMake because it's just built in. It's very simple. I'm going to create a statically linked library for reasons I'll explain later to do with tests. Uh, ground name, uh, class name, I'm going to call it ground.db. Keep it in those files. Qt module is going to be none. 
I'm not using any of the cute stuff. They want this to be um, not library dependent. No translations. 64 bit. Add to git go. So it takes a few seconds for Cute Creator to catch up with what's actually going on here. Yeah, so just give it a minute. Scanning for tests. There's no tests yet, my friend, but there will be soon. Fee not. Okay, so what that's done is it's created us a subdirectory called GradUpDB. It's created us a little project file in here. And it's got C11, we'll fix that in a bit. Um, we've got on a header file with the class name we want. And we've got our implementation file with nothing in there. Now, I could just start coding at this point, but that would be a very bad naughty Adam if I did that. Because what we want to do is we want to do test driven development. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is going to right click this and get a new sub project. This is the least obvious menu in the whole world, but that's the one you need. Um, and again, I'm writing tests. So I'm going to choose a non QT project, plain C++ application rather than a tests application. And that's because I use a specific test library that's not built into Qt. Um, so I'm going to call this ground up DB hyphen tests because I'm highly original like that again within the same project. Choose QMake, desktop, yeah, add it to Git, probably a good idea. And then type count one, two, miss a few, 99, 100, and there we go, and there it is. Um, so now I've got my main hello world, yeah, we'll get rid of that. Get hello world's in my house. Um, so <coughs> that's that project. Um, now I could start coding here, but I just want to create another sub project before I forget. Um, and this is going to be again a plain C++ application. This is going to be our command line interface for our database once we've done the tests. We want a CLI for it. I'm going to call this ground up DB hyphen CLI. Because again, I'm highly original. QMake again, desktop again. Yeah, fine, done, boom. There we go. Again, one, two, miss a few, 99, 100. Uh, and I'll just minimize that for now and I'll close these files out. Okay. So we've got our three projects now, um, but what I need to do is I need to make sure they're dependent upon one another. So this one at the moment has no dependencies on the other on the library project, which means it'll get really annoying really quickly. Like I'll run the tests and be like, why aren't my tests working? And it's because it hasn't automatically recompiled my library, which is all my fixes in for said tests. And that gets very annoying very quickly, trust me, like incredibly annoying. So we're gonna uh, fix that one now. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a defines within here. So I'm going to create a uh, new file. Uh, call this a general empty file. Call this defines.pry. This is a standard file within uh, Creator. Again, you have to wait a few seconds for it to appear. And in my defines.pry there is nothing. Now I'm going to copy and paste from previous projects because I'm horrific at remembering these things. So what I'm going to do is paste this in, get rid of that because again, that's something I did wrong before. So what this is basically doing is this file is going to be included by my project files and that depend upon it. So see, I've got a master project file here, which just specifies what my subdirectories are. I've got a project file here for the library, the static lib. And I've got a project file here for the tests. But again, there's no dependencies amongst here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and add uh, said dependencies, if I can remember the format for it. So again, I'm going to cheat here. I'm also going to set up the projects so that they're using the right version of uh, C++ as well. So in my top level project, what I'm going to do I'm going to add in uh, my dependencies here. So I'm going to say ground up DB tests depends on lib on ground up DB. And my CLI depends on ground up DB. Default is console app, even though it's not. Um, the only library really is ground up DB, the rest of the consoles. I'm going to say C17 as a default for everybody. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is now I've set the dependency here and then need to go into here so it can actually find the libraries because at the moment if I build this it will build the other file but it won't allow this uh, project to see the includes from the other project which is a bit annoying so first things first change that to 17 before I forget um, and then what I want to do if I can find my right file for copy and pasting 
is I, oh yeah, Mac OS X, because I'm using C++17, you have to instruct uh, QMake, use the right version of Mac OS X. So C++17 was only supported in, um, you know, Mac OS X version 15. So um, you have to make sure you override the default, which I think is 10.13 at the moment. So we're proper cutting edge here, peeps. Um, what we also then need to do is we need to include the PRI file. So the PRI file we defined here, we need to include it here. I'm gonna correct that. So ground up. So we're basically saying go one up, go into ground up DB, which is this file here, and pull in defines dot pre. What we also need to do is, and that is correct. So this is basically telling. When I'm building on Mac OS X, and I'll do this for Windows and Linux at another time, um, we're basically saying, okay, pull in uh, the library files here, and that's all the named library, which is that. And that is basically what this is. Um, okay, so it's built that message, including, there we go. So that is now uh, working. So now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to sort out my tests project. Um, actually, no. Before I do that, before I forget, I'm going to do the same thing here, um, but for my underline my CLI here. So change that to 17. Um, grab this line. Put in here. So this is a bit involved, but once you've done it once, you're done. Okay. So feel free to copy this out. Because we don't need to do this anymore. And this file gets automatically managed by Cube Creator as well. Uh, here you go. You see, it's got the defines that's pulled in, and that links back to the main file. Um, so we're good there. So, okay, close all them down again. Boom. Got nothing open. And we can hide that away. So we've just got our main files that we're dealing with now. Um, this is test project is really a uh, test driven development project. So I'm going to rejig how this is done. So I'm going to add a new file. And it's a C++ header file. And this is going to be catch. That should be spelled catch dot HPP. I like using the catch library. It's so simple and it's a header only test library, which header only libraries make me happy. So I'm going to copy this in. As you can see, it's like 17,000 lines of pure genius. So thank you to uh, the peeps who developed that. Uh, all kudos to them. All hail to Blue Cubes Limited. It's a fantastic library. I love using it. So that's in there. You've got to be a bit careful when you're using catch that you don't include it more than once because otherwise it pukes. Um, so in order to make sure we do that, I'm going to create a tests header file. So if it lets me do something. Ugh. There we go. Do, 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 do. What's going on? File, new file or project. C plus plus header file. Uh, no, wrong way. Wrong location, dude. Okay. Uh, C plus plus header file, and we call this tests. Now I'm not putting dot hpp because everything else normally is dot h. I tend to <laughs> somewhat confusingly, I tend to use both. So anything dot hpp is like an external included thing. Dot h is my stuff, just the way I roll because I'm weird. Um, I'm going to include at the top just to confuse people, and I'm also going to make sure that catch dot hpp is pulled in there. Um, slightly confusing what I need to do is you only need to make sure you include this thing once so I'm going to create um, I'm going to rename this source for actually no I'm going to create a new source file uh, so C++ source file and we're going to call this DB management because the first thing we need to do is create a database um, which means I need a DB management tests file I put hyphen tests there because all my test cases are end with hyphen tests so this is my tests file and what I want to do is create a very basic test which will um, effectively check whether I've got a database or not and just to save a bit of time I'm going to paste this in just to be annoying 
Now we see here that I'm including tests.h, all my other test files will include um, the catch.hpp and not tests.h. I need to include that exactly once, and that's because tests.h has my main function, which means I can remove this and include deleting it off the file system. Yes, get away. So once that's gone, there we go. So now in here we see what we're doing here. Uh, there's a few things going on in this file, so I'll explain very briefly what these are. So first of all, these test case and section are elements that are defined by um, the catch library. Uh, and this is a human readable, so we're going to create a new empty database, and this is the function that I'm effectively testing. And I like to document everything as a story. So if you're doing proper agile development, um, and if you don't follow Alan Holub on Twitter, you totally need to. Um, mine's Adam Fowler UK, but you should also follow Alan Holub, he's a genius on agile development. So uh, always document everything as a story. If it doesn't enable your user, there's no point adding the functionality. So I'm going to document everything we do as a user story. Now, the particular user here is a database administrator. A database administrator needs to create an empty database so they can later store and value retrieve data because that's the value. You don't just want to create a database just for sheer giggles, although some people do. Um, I want to actually do something useful with it. So I'm going to create a database called MyEmptyDB. And this is kind of the default settings. So it might be a bit weird that I've got a section here. But this is like a default settings. I might have a test later on in a new version that isn't create an empty database. It's create one from a template, for example. So this is just the kind of default. Um, so I'm going to create a database instance. Use a, a function in GroundUpDB to create an empty database with that name. That gives me a database reference, which I can then do magic with. Now, having created a database in that step, that, that will have errored if it hadn't worked, and it's not errored if we got this far. Um, we need to make sure that there is a folder that that thing's created. Normally, I don't like doing this. I don't like reaching down into the implementation for the database, but there's not really any other way of doing it um, when we're this basic in the project. So I'm going to basically get the directory where the database is stored and make sure it exists. Empty database, empty directory, but the directory needs to be there. Um, and I'm going to need to make sure that it is empty because it you know, could create a set of defaults. Now, what I'm doing here is, as you can already see, I'm using some C17 specific libraries already. And that's because file handling in C++, much like multi-threading, is a pain in the ass um, before the latest versions of C++. So I'm going to keep it simple for you all and just teach you the modern stuff. So this is fs. This fs is actually standard colon colon file system. We'll type in standard colon colon file system colon colon is directory is a bit annoying. So I'm going to do this here. And this is the header file where that comes from. I'm also dealing with strings. I use strings everywhere, not car arrays. Um, so um, for reasons that I won't go into, mainly because I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, I prefer messing around with strings than I do car arrays. Just like to keep it up a level from C, much to the annoyance of everybody who you know who writes C. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So this is a very simple test, but as you can see, there's a couple of problems here at the moment. First of all, this function doesn't exist because we've not created it, and this class doesn't exist because we've not created it. So we should probably uh, go and uh, do something about that. So in my GroundUpDB H file, we see we've got a GroundUpDB, which is good. And we should absolutely have that. Um, but what are we missing? Well, we are missing, my friend, a static method. So static the database, you can spell database, that's generally helpful. Great, empty DB. And I'm passing a standard string um, DB name. Mm, is there something missing here? I think there might be, but we'll go into that in another lesson. Now, because I'm using strings, I need to include string there and as you can see that's now worked although I do need to send me care along I've been playing around with Python too much lately uh, again unknown type database and they're absolutely right we haven't created databases yet so I'm going to create a separate header file I create lots of header files just to make it easy on people um, I, I'm very much from the Java school of creating files like one per class um, if I can help it maybe class plus um, any enums it's using um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a C++ class. This is kind of a cool feature, cute creator. Uh, the class name is going to be called database. 
base class is going to be totally custom it's not a standard one I'm not going to include any of this because I'm not doing cute really so dot h dot cpp that could be dot hpp if you prefer you can set that I'm going to click continue I'm going to add it to git obviously what this does is it goes on and creates both those files which is kind of cool so um as you can see you've got database.h is my database and then i've got uh, database.cpp kind of cool so now if i go back to my tests i uh, can see i create a new db and it's puking and that's because we're passing in something from create db um to create a database and we've not added that to the definition so what is it we're actually doing well have a look in here this creates a database yep um we're not included anything that's useful so include oh, oh got a little auto complete include database.h that gives us the database class so this is now correct however if we go into database um we don't take anything here so we're going to take a standard string called this db name and i'm going to create another standard string which is the full path to that folder I'm also going to create in here a static um, uh, database create empty standard string db name. And the reason I'm creating this here as well as my high level one is um, because my high level one is really just a convenience to get a whole bunch of functions that are in other classes. So um, that's why I'm doing that. It might be a bit counterintuitive. So do that. That now looks correct. Go to uh, ground up db dot h. That looks correct. Um, we should probably go and implement some of these things there, right? Uh, this is incorrect now. So it's standard string db name and a standard string full path. But mm, we need to store them somewhere. We should probably do that in a bit, but we'll do that later. And now I want to include database, and if I do this, it will remind me what I've called these things. Yep, definitely want one of them. Like that. And that needs to return a database. So return database thread, comma, um, select thread. Yep. It's a family thing. So, no FIPO convert. Put that on a bit. Type specify. Oh, yeah. Keep forgetting this. It's all the time. There we go. It's more like it. Um, so, oh, that's a minimum implementation because I've got to return something. So, I can't just leave that blank like I'm leaving this one blank, right? Um, so, that technically is a full implementation. And then in here, we got ground up db, uh, but we need to return a database. And this is in ground up db, come on, come on. create empty database. Oh, look, it's pulled it in this time. And I want to do database, date our base, come on, come on. create empty db name. Uh, and I should probably actually return that, that might be a good idea. Yep, so that's basically just a simple pass through function. Uh, now it's found database. Why is it found database? Because ground up db dot h includes database dot h, so we don't need to include it ourselves. Same for standard string. That's in this header file, so we are good to go. Now, if we go back to our tests here, we see that allegedly, allegedly, this now works because both these functions exist through the constructor that uh, uh, will uh, return create empty db creates a database and that copies it. Uh, copy to reference. Uh, I've not got a get about directory, so I totally need one of them. So let's go to database. I need a public method. I'm going to put this here. I keep my statics at the bottom. I'm a bit of a tart like that. And we'll just turn standard string. Get directory. Get directory. There we go. Uh, okay, so that's uh, now what I tend to do void just because I'm old school. Um, basically make make it obvious that I've not just forgotten to include parameters in here, but that it doesn't include any parameters, okay? Um, that's why we do that. Bit of a weird one. You notice I've not got any virtual destructors. We'll talk about that in a different uh, thing in the future. 
I've now got my get directory, so this should be fine now. Yeah, it should be fine. If I build it, it's going to puke. Why is it going to puke? It's going to puke for some reasons, actually. Um, first one being unused parameter DB name. That's just a warning. We can ignore that. Um, no rule to make target. Okay. Needed by ground up DB CLI. Yes. So turns out I cannot spell. So yeah, there we go. Try again. Oh, a bit quicker than this actually. A command failed. Oh no, library not found. Minus L lib ground up db. Yeah, you're probably right, mate. Um, probably this now, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's also going to build my other one, which is a bit annoying. Should probably have left this till later. Do, 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 do. Scanning, 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 build. Duke. Symbols not found. Yeah, here we go. So, why has this symbol not been found? Oh my god, because, and this was deliberate, I just wanted to show this error. So, I've defined this um, fantastic function. However, in my source file, I've not actually created the implementation. So, if you ever get this weird thing, catch test, blah, blah, blah database get directory so I can't find this symbol and you're like but I have defined it it's like yeah you defined it but you've not implemented it so what you need to do is never forget this as well because this always confuses the crap out of me boom I tend to get rid of that at this point so get directory I'm going to return red is my directory name minimum implementation yeah so that is technically Compliant, now I'm in here, that's technically correct. And if I build this project, it will build the library and then build this, which means it works. It says you've got unused parameters, they're just warnings. And now if I have a look at what's in my folder, my, you see there's no build files there, but if we look up one, haha, there's a build file just outside of this source file. So if I go in there and have a look, I've got one for each one. I want to go into tests. Uh, there we go, so I didn't go into it. I don't know why I keep using D CD as well these days, don't really need to. If I run these tests, we say, oh no, my one test failed, why, why? Um, and the reason for that is, okay, here, it, we've created that database, uh, and it's going, is this di does this directory exist? And no, it doesn't, which is absolutely correct. So the idea of test-driven development is that you don't, implement something then test it you write your tests to the point where they compile you then run them they will deliberately fail so every one of your first test runs should fail and the reason for that is you don't want to write your code then write the tests and it passes um, for two different reasons one you could be implementing more code than is strictly required to create that user story which is just eats time and two you don't actually know whether the tests pass in because your code's correct or whether you've got the logic wrong in the tests. Running this test up front will show you that, yeah, actually it does puke. Um, so what we need to do now is actually implement this properly. Okay. So what we're going to do, <coughs> uh, Adam might be a tenor. Oh, dear, oh dear me. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually implement the create empty function um, properly. So if we go to database.cpp, you see at the moment create empty is rubbish. So I'm going to paste in the actual implementation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a base directory that all my databases are going to go under. That's going to be based off the current directory, not home directories. We'll explain why in a bit. Um, and then what I need to not forget to do is pull in a few libraries. I'll explain why in a bit. Um, Okay, why is this expected namespace name? You've got one. Um, God. 
Uh, what I also need to do is think, well, hang on, what's going on here? So pass in the database name. If the base directory doesn't exist, create it. It makes perfect sense. And then below that, I've got base directory slash. This is really bad practice. This will not run on Windows. We'll talk about you know platform independence and in probably the next session. Um, if that folder doesn't exist, create that directory and then return a database reference with the name and the folder in it. That's basically what this does. Now, what we're not doing, we're not using this name in the folder anywhere. So when get directory gets called, that's still going to puke. So we need to return an actual directory. So in order to do that, we've got to create a couple of members that store that. Okay. Um, so how do we do that? Well, all I'm going to do um, is I'm going to paste in something here because I'm a cheat. Um, you'll notice here I've got something for a future lesson. We'll talk about that later. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a member called name and member called full path. I put M underscore because otherwise if they clash, it gets really annoying really quickly. So that's just what I've been doing. So member name, member full path. I don't have the type in the name. That's just bad skills. Um, simple idiom. We'll talk about that in a future uh, session. But for now, we'll just ignore it. Uh, so I've now created two member functions now. In C++, you can initialize these not in the constructor. In fact, you shouldn't. Um, member name initialized with DB name. And these need to be in the same order, ideally, um, as they are in the uh, header file. And then what I do, just to make sure that everybody knows that this is deliberately empty, I just tend to put semicolon there. Just personal style thang. Um, why is this puking? Be an issue. Not using them yet. Don't understand. Wasn't puking before. Stop being a miserable little puke. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. Why not set this up? Ha ha ha! So, if you ever wonder why you can't see the libraries that are in C plus plus seventeen, it's because you have forgotten, my friend. To tell it to C plus plus seventeen project, so let's make sure that is everywhere. That's in that one. Uh, it's in that one. It's in that one. Yep, cool. So now, if I go back to my database.cpp, magically it can actually find the file system folder now. Great. So that's fantastic. But what we've not done is we've not returned the directory. So that's m underscore full path. So I return that directory. Go back to my magical tests of doom. Recompile. Mustn't forget to recompile. Oh, now totally pukes. Exists is unavailable. Introduced in Mac OS 10.15. Ah, yes. So I've yet again forgotten to do another thing. Okay, my deployment target, I'm guessing I've missed out of my library file. Yup, that'll do it. Make sure I put that in. Back to here. Recompile. Magic happens. Blah, blah, blah. Compile output. I like looking at compile output. Come on. Come build. You know you want to. I know it's working when it takes forever. All right, there we go. So it has worked. Make exited normally. So if we go in here, run our tests, boom, all tests passed. Two assertions. So what that basically means is we've created a directory called my empty DB. It's there and it's empty. Just to make sure that that is true, it will create it underneath the folder from where you've uh, ran it. But it will be in the one for the library, I believe, on it. Can't remember where I put it. Where's it created that folder then? Ah, yes, it is in the current folder because it starts with a dot. If I open that in Finder, we will see that we have my empty DB, which is the name of my database, and it is in fact empty. Yep. Um, just make sure I've not added any files. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> Um, make sure I'm not creating these in here, it's going to cause stuff to puke. Yeah, cool. Um, so we've now got those files, and I can do run the test again. All tests passed, two assertions, one case. Okay, so we've successfully created a database, which is fantastic. However, it's kind of useless if you're not actually storing anything. Um, so what type of database shall we create today? Well, let's keep it ridiculously simple, shall we? So um, 
A simplest type of database is where you store a value and retrieve a value. That is a key value store. So if you've ever heard of things like Redis, a Redis is a fantastic key value store. It does a lot more besides. It's actually a data structure store, but um, it's very, very simple from the fact that, um, you know, you can store a value, retrieve a value. Uh, and everything else that you build on a database is basically built on top of that. Or maybe you search values, you query across values, you sum values up, you manipulate values. But first and foremost, you've got to be able to store a value and retrieve a value. So let's do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create some tests. And because we're implementing key value, this is not really a management functionality. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to implement this from uh, scratch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new source file. And we're going to call this just a source file. I don't want the header and we're going to call this key value Oops, tests if I can spell key value uh, and click done and you can see that's empty so you know up until this point I've kind of copied and pasted but I'm not going to do that now so I need to include my catch file notice I'm including catch now not tests I only include tests in one of my test source files because that's the one that's going to create that main. Um, so I don't want to do that. Um, so in here you see define catch config main. That's where the main comes in. So I'm only doing that from in here. So this will have the main built out into it. This I don't. I just want to use the functions. So it's very, very important if you're using catch that you only include that main uh, define once. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a test case. Test on the store case. Uh, I'm going to do store and retrieve a value. And that will use set key value and get key value. This is just for my own knowledge. Maybe you should put that in there. Um, okay, so that's that. Now I need to actually implement the damn thing. So don't forget. We're agile, right? So we're going to do this as a user story. So there's a who, there's a what they need to do, and value that they're going to get out of it, right? So who is it? So as a database user this time, not a database administrator, uh, I need to store and retrieve a value with a simple name nothing complicated why do i need to do that so i can persist data for later use so in my program i, I want to store data for later use i need a database that's what that's the value you know i can store and retrieve data later it's like i can't know what the value is give me the value for fred and fred's value will come back that's exactly what a key value store does so now i've got my user story i can then implement my user story so I'm going to just do basic get and uh, no, set and get, not get and set, but I'll get that the wrong around. Uh, so what I need to do, um, so I need to create a standard string for my database name. We're going to call this uh, my empty DB. Uh, it's not going to be empty, but I'm doing that for a very specific reason, which you'll see in a bit. And database DB. So Written up ground. That helps if you actually include <laughs> include your database file or bind bar. Um, ground up db dot h. There we go. Otherwise, I can't actually do anything. Ground up db. That's more like it. So I'm going to create an empty database. Call it uh, db name. All your tests should leave the system in the exact same state it started in. Mine doesn't currently, so a lot of you are probably puking. So uh, we know we have been successful when, this is the best way of thinking about writing tests. It's like, well, okay, first of all, um, the retrieved value is the same as the stored value. Pretty straightforward, right? So in order to know that, we need to reference the key. So I'm going to call this key um, simple string and we need a standard string value and I'm going to call this uh, some highly valuable valuable value 
Yeah. And we're going to do db.set key value, key comma value. Uh, that's going to be the function we need. And we're going to require that value is equal to db.get key value for that key. Yep, pretty straightforward. So we set a value and then we make sure that the retrieved value here is the same as the set value here. Store value, stored value, my English is getting worse. Right, so we've now created the test. So we know the minimum functionality we need to implement, which is set key value and get key value. So let's go and implement those. So go to the CLI. So we go into database. So here we've got get directory, which is undabby but we want to set and uh, retrieve these. I'm going to copy and paste just because I can really can't type these out um <clears throat> key value use cases so set key value so it doesn't return anything set key value with a string and a string you don't need weirdly to provide these values in the header file but they just idiomatically it just makes sense for documentation wise uh, also means that when i implement in c plus plus it will just pull them over and then it returns standard string for get key value right i'm just storing strings at the moment um not specifying a type not doing ints nothing like that so that's all i'm doing that's the definitions i need so i'll save that before i forget and then in here, actually need to go and implement them. So how are we going to store this? Well, there's loads of different ways we could do it. By far the simplest way is to use a file. So let's use a file. So let's implement um, do, 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 set key value and it's standard string key standard string value. And don't forget that that returns naf all. There we go. So that's that implementation and void database get key value standard string key return wibble. Yep, these are the two minimum implementations. Yep, um, for my test. So, yeah, what's up? You can, oh, yeah, it's not a void. Duh. There we go. So that those are minimum implementations according to our test, which is what we should be doing in test driven development. So in here, that now compiles. So build it. And our survey set. Something very slow. Building. Building built. So now if I run my tests, it pukes, which is correct because um my get key value is always returning wibble. So it's saying some highly valuable value equal to wibble it's not it's wrong so my test fails so we're not successful which is good because it means we've tested these and <coughs> it's not doing what we want it to do so let's go back into the implementation and actually get it to do something valuable um so how can we do this well we're going to use uh, a couple of libraries uh, standard io libraries and we're just going to store in files so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to copy and paste this because there's not really any value in you listening to me type. So this is set key value. And what I'm doing here, I'm creating a output file stream. I'm opening the file from my full path, which is my database path, slash, again, really bad idea, the key name, which is some key. And then I'm putting underscore string dot kv. So this is just saying that I'm storing a string in this value and it's a key value value. No particular reason I chose this, but it makes it obvious in the file system what each thing is. Um, I'm writing to the file and I'm not appending to the file. Each time I call this method, I want to replace the value. So I truncate the file and I write it. I then spam that value out and then I close the file system off. So that's set value. Uh, we don't want to turn a wibble. That would be bad. What we want to do is we want to pull in. Yeah. Helps you select the right thing adds. Right, there we go. And this is a long and convoluted way to do it. So you notice what I'm not doing is I'm not doing um, what I'm not doing. And what you might be tempted to do is this. Yeah. So let me show you why that is a really bad skills uh, idea. Okay. So, I mean, that, that would be obvious, right? Because you've kind of, oh, it's not OS anymore. Yep. Yeah. So 
it's just basically the opposite of what you've done here. You've got an input stream um, and you're pulling the value in, right? So that, that is totally, perfectly logical to do, right? Um, however, it doesn't actually work um, because, of the, because of what this actually does. Now, people, because you've written a line there, you might think it reads a line here, but it doesn't actually do that. It reads a string. Um, and the, the logic for doing that is a bit different. So here we see some highly valuable value is what we've stored, but we've only pulled some back. I, it's pulled the first word out. So this actually only ever pulls the first word out. So we don't want to do that. What we have to do is we have to go, okay, we want to pull in everything that's in the file. So this is generally a really bad idea in C++. You don't want to just randomly read an entire file, but because it's a key value store, we know it's simple and we know we need the entire value. I'm going to yank it all into memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, um, go to the end of this file, get how big that file is, and in my string, make sure I've got enough space to store said value. Go back to the beginning of the file, and then iterate through every character, i.e. every char that's in that file, um, and spam it into value. So it's basically pulling each individual character and putting it in value, and then returning value back, okay? So that is a very convoluted way of doing it, but it makes perfect sense once you read it. C++ gets very gnarly very quickly. In Java, you just say read everything and you'd be done, right? Um, but that's not how we do things here. So now what we've seen is we've moved on um, and we see, well, hang on a minute. Something's failing now. Why is this failing? Well, our assertion before that was failing was this. So now this is working. So we're actually pulling back the full value that's passed. However, we've got a bit of a peculiar thing here. P equals equals end. Well, hang on a minute. This is database management tests. Why are they failing? Well, in database management tests, what we've done here is we said, okay, we expect that directory to exist and we expect it to be empty. However, because we've used the same name of the database, it's not empty. So we're not clearing out the database after each test. So our tests are interdependent on each other. So if they run in a particular order, if there's a timing issue, um, one test could interfere with the, out with the outcome of another, and that's really bad skills. So what we need to make sure is that each test cleans up after itself. Now, this gets a bit gnarly in the fact that, you know, you could uh, argue you don't want to do this because at the moment we've got this fantastic way of uh, looking at these things. If I open, actually, yeah, I can pull. Cancel. Where does it yeah, open with? Where do you need to put the Visual Studio Code in my quick to open thing? Boom. Oh, oh I really didn't want to do that. Oh, bear with me. So yeah, um, that's not helping. Actually, yeah, I'll just drag this across. They see my cheat sheet that I'm copying from. So um, we see here some highly valuable value is in that file. That's what it is. It's a LF file, not ETH, and not a. That's because I'm on a Mac, so we need to worry about that when it comes to platform independence later. But we see that it is storing the correct thing. So now get that out of the way. This is where I'm copying and pasting things from. Um, and we see that's there. So I can introspect this after the test, which is quite handy. But really, our tests should clean up after each other. Yeah, and you shouldn't be manually checking things afterwards because your tests would have all the functionality in to do this. So in order to clean up after itself, after we do all our tests, we need to destroy this database and we need to do it here. We need to do it here. So we need to destroy it. Now, what we basically then need to do is uh, destroy. So db dot destroy. Yep. Um, and then we need to check that the database is indeed destroyed. Uh, and that's basically the kind of opposite of this test up here because we're basically saying, okay, that file now doesn't exist. So the, yep. Um, so that's that test. Now we've not got a destroy method, so we should probably go and implement that. So we go to database.h and in here. So I'm going to put this down here because this is really uh, kind of management functions. Yep. And it's not static because it's an instance. So it's a void, destroy. Now I'm calling it destroy. You might be tempted, well, why didn't you call it delete? But watch what happens with the syntax highlighting. So it goes yellow. 
why, oh, why, oh, why. Delete is a keyword in C and C++. Do not, do not ever call anything delete. It just will cause you a world of pain before you realize what the hell is going on. So we're going to call that destroy. We should probably go and actually implement said destroy function again because it's a management function. Since user functions, I'm going to call this set of management functions. So it returns a void and it's called database. So I'm going to destroy. Destroy, destroy, ye oldy version of destroy you are. And basically, what my uh, destroy function needs to do is delete that directory, right? So I only delete it if it exists. If we call destroy twice, we don't need to puke. So if that directory exists, then delete everything within that directory. Yep. And notice we're not deleting this directory, the base directory, we're deleting the implementation directory because if we deleted that one, might inadvertently delete somebody else's database and that would be bad karma okay so we've implemented that we've got the management test in here well, what we need to also do is not forget to destroy it after this test here yep yeah, that's what's causing the other test to fail so now we've implemented those we need to build it get rid of that run oh, don't run the test because it's not finished compiling that's oh, finished compiling now run the tests and we see I can't, still can't run. Why is that failed? Well, it failed because the database is still there from the previous run. So if we run it again, it now works. And we can run it as many times as we want because each test now cleans up after itself. Yep. And if we do an ls minus la, we see that there's a ground up db folder, but there's nothing in it anymore. Yep. It's all been destroyed. That ds star thing is a Mac specific thing. Whenever you open something and find it, it creates a really annoying file that eats disk space. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> so now we've successfully implemented um, database creation. We've successfully implemented uh, getting and setting values, which is fan dabby dozy. However, that's great. I can't use my database. I've got a command line interface to it. I can't use it in a you know I can use it in a library, but um, I've not done that yet. So let's let's create our command line interface now. So basically what we want to do is we don't want to put lots of logic into our command line interface. It should be very, very thin. It should only do the absolute bare minimum that we need it to do. Um, shouldn't do hello world because it's crap. Um, so, and the reason, the reason I'm saying it needs to be thin is we don't want to introduce anything in a main file that requires testing. We should only, you know, we should put as much logic as possible into the library file and then test that because you can run unit tests against library files you can't run them against other main files so um, this needs to be fairly thin and only do uh, the bare minimum so what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna need to pass in some command line parameters I don't like doing this by hand at all there's libraries out there for this and I found a fantastic library which I like to use and this is called cxxops.http so this is another fantastic library that I've discovered. Um, I didn't write, I hasten to add it. This is only 2000 lines. So it's again, a header only library, um, but this is created by Jared Beck. It's fantastic. So it's a MIT licensed, um, but basically what it does is it manages command line options in for like Unix style command line options. So I'm gonna pull in that file and then I'm gonna use that file. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is in my main here, I'm going to use IO stream because I'm printing out the command line, giving user feedback, uh, using my options file, obviously use my database file, uh, use name page standard so I don't have to type it in everywhere. It's a bit naughty, but who cares? Uh, and then what I need to do is now create my options file. So CXX ops, come on, come on, options. Unsurprisingly, I'll probably call it something highly original like options. Um, now you give it the name of the binary, so ground up db hyphen cli. Is have I spell that right? Yes, I have. Uh, and then the description. So this is a command line interface for ground up db. Yep. So that's basically my options definition, which I can then reuse later on. Uh, I'm going to create a print usage. So every time somebody types in something wrong. Um, I basically want to tell them why they've done something wrong. 
Whoops, bad config. Again, highly descriptive. Uh, um, don't forget to send the end line character out there, otherwise people aren't going to be happy. Um, no, it's not. Why is it not? Oh, it's not EOL. I always get. I always do this. First time I type this in. I don't know why I've got EOL stuck ahead. It's Endel. Should know that by now. Um, and then what I want to do is pull in some options. I'm going to copy and paste this bit because nothing really valuable here. So that bit I'm going to copy and paste. So this, well, this is basically saying grab command line parameters and determine what we're doing. So this is the link to that file if you want it. Um, I'm going to create basically the same functionality that I've just implemented. So create a database, destroy a database, uh, set a key, get a key, and then there's some options I need. So I need the database name, obviously, uh, the key name and the key value. So these are all my options for my thing. Now you could say, you know, <coughs> something we'll probably do in the future is the first command is the operation. You don't have to do minus C, minus D, whatever. Um, but for now we're doing that. And what this is, these are basically Boolean variables. You know, if minus C or minus minus create is there, then this is true. Yeah, whereas these are string values. So we're expecting a single string after each of these. So minus K space what the value is or minus k equals or minus minus key equals you know those type of things and then we're just passing those yep um and then what we want to do is want to create our different implementations so if the result of passing has uh create equal to one i somebody's specified create um then we want to go and run create so create requires that you specify a database name so if uh, you don't we need to do something so if result dot count uh, name equals zero then actually see how you must specify a database name with minus n name yeah name and then end of line and then print usage so they get the full usage. I mean, they don't get the full usage because it's crap, but they will do eventually. Okay. Um, and then because we crapping out, we return one rather than carry on. Um, but now, if that is not true, we create the database. Notice I'm not doing this in an else because I've already returned one. It just keeps code a bit neater. So standard string DB name. You'll notice this. This looks suspiciously like our test um, but we're going to pull the database name from an option uh, and we know this is safe to do because we've just checked that there is at least one instance of it there um, so we're going to pull that in and we're going to do it as uh, standard string that's how you get the value out and then that's a method call yeah and that basically returns a string into db name that's how it works uh, if you're not familiar with what the hell this is this is kind of um typing system so um yeah so templating we'll talk about in another lesson but c plus plus supports templating this as function rather than have as string as int as 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 one function per thing there's just one function you specify the type nice and simple it is brilliant way of coding um but we'll cover standard template library and templates in a, in a future thing but we've now got our database name we need to go and create it so database db and I could just copy this from my test, really. Go up DB, come along, create and DB, uh, DB name. And there you go. So now we've done that. And once we've done it, we don't need to tell the user anything. We'll just assume that it, you know, if it's silent, it worked because that's good Unix standby. So we've now done that. So let's go and build that. Make sure it builds. And in here, we'll go into the ground up CLI. Up CLI, uh, we just run it with nothing, it doesn't say anything, well, that's annoying. So, what we should do down here is actually say, Well, if we don't run it with any parameters, we should probably tell them that that's a bad thing. So, if they get this far without these returns, um, uh, no command specified, specified English, Adam, English, any from England, you should know how to do this. Come on, print usage, uh, and then return one because that's naughty they've been bad bad people so build that again if you don't specify a command it should puke yep now run it oh no whoops bad config yep cool so that's bad so now if i specify my command as create database 
So, oh no, you must specify a database name. Good point. So, database name, I'm going to call it MyDB because we're highly original. Hmm, nothing's come back. Interesting. That means it probably worked. So, that's great. So, we've now created a database. We should probably enable us to set a value in it. Well, actually, we should probably delete the damn thing, but we'll do that last. So, uh, <clears throat> we're going to do a similar thing, but for um, uh, create uh, set value. But again, you've seen me write one of these. I'm not going to do it again. So, if s, so set is one, you need a name, you need a key, you need a value. So, here we just see standard, just like we did before. Uh, you must specify a database name, you must specify a kit set. Uh, key to set and you specify value and then we're creating a database blah 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 but we're not creating the database because we've created it in a previous command so what we need to do is we need to load a database ah crap we didn't capture this in our user stories so we've never specified that you know you don't use a database and then throw it away because all of our tests throw the database away after they're being used which is bad karma so what we need to do we need this function we didn't realize we needed it so we need to go back to the original um and load a database so in here as well as create a new uh empty database we need to implement a test um for loading an existing database yeah so again i'm going to cheat and um, this is a different test case because it's not about creating databases and all the many different ways you can do that although we've got one but load an existing database so the story is as a database user again not as an administrator I want to create a reference to a database, so I can later, uh, well, to an existing database, really. To an existing database, so I can later store and retrieve data. So I don't need to create it every time. Now, the way I do test this, annoyingly, is I create a database. Yep. And then I create a second reference to it. So I'll say db2, um, ground up db, so load a database reference. So it's the same thing, but I need, because my tests are... Uh, uh, all atomic they they create and delete everything it needs I need to create a database first before I can then load the database that has previously been created So that's why this looks a bit tortured and we know it's successful when we have a valid database reference returned um, And the database is a folder that exists on the file system So notice I'm testing DB2 and the folder uh, is empty and then I can destroy it. Yeah So that's how we know we're true, but we've not got a load DB in here. So this again ground up DB load DB so what I need to do is go back into my library and go to ground up DB. Um, and this is another static function. So static database, load DB, standard string DB name. And why am I doing this? We'll explain in a different lesson. So load DB and then in ground up DB, you actually need to go and implement the damn thing. So database, ground up db, column column, low db, boom, love it, um, return, database, low db, db name, again this doesn't exist so it's going to puke at me, so in database.h, management functions, I want one which is static, again, database, again, load, standard, string, name, oh, db name, yep, it helps if you actually type properly. Right, there we go. So I've now got that there. I need to go and implement it. You notice I've probably called that the wrong thing. Um, <clears throat> so in database here, management functions, I'm going to put it in here. This will be a database. Database, go on, go on. Load. Boom. Love it when a plan comes together. Uh, so we now need to load a database. So what are we actually doing here? Well, we don't need to create anything. We just need to load it. So really, we want to do the same here. I want to create a link to the base file. I want to create a link to that folder. We're going to assume it already exists, and then we're just going to return the reference to that. Yep, so that's basically how you do load. Uh, now go in here. That looks hunky dory. Now go in here. Yep, it exists, so we recompile. And then need to go into the tests. Ground up db tests slash slash. Wait for it to finish building, which I think it has. Run. Seven assertions in three test cases. So this is passing now. So we now have a load function, which is fan dabby dozy. So we now need in our main here to use that load function. It's there. Happy days. That will have rebuilt. Ground up db hyphen cli. 
Got a slash. Hmm. Alright, alarm going off for some reason. Time to get up, I think. Um, so, create a database. I can't remember what it's called. It. So, no, I don't want to create it. I want to set uh, a. How do you do that? Um, I'm supposed to find a name. Oh, yeah. Uh, minus name, my DB. Great. Uh, key, yep. Uh, key, some key, value, some value. Hmm, it appears to have worked. Great. So, we now set the key. Um, we now need to get the key, which is probably a good idea, right? Um, a bit kind of pointless having a database where you can only set things. <coughs> so, um, I need to cheat and copy and paste this damn thing. I'm not typing that all out, all out manually. So, easy, easy. So, again, if my operation is get, uh, I need a database name and I need a key name, not a value, because I'm retrieving the value. So, these two were copied from before. So, again, Database name, key name, load the database, not create it, and then I print out the value. So I'm printing out the value, and that way um, I can pipe this in. So I can, in standard Unix terms, I can pipe the output of this command to the input of another command. So rather than say your database value is blah, which would totally screw up the formatting, I'm just going to return the value and then you can pipe it into all the Unix commands, which is just yeah, good practice. So what I'm going to do now is not specify the value. I want to get the value from my DB of some key. Hit enter. Boom. Some value. Fun dabby dozy. That's great. So now if we do uh, an LS in uh, LA, we see that we actually have this in a different folder. Uh -huh. Why is this in a different folder? I hear you ask. Well, because we've not actually specified the base folder. It's relative to the command that you're executing, which is really bad karma. We'll sort that out in future. But if we do a um, cat of that, we see that there's a value. We see that there's a funky character because we're using standard output stream. So it might look like a text file, but it's not really a text file. It's got funky characters in it to indicate that the string is ended. And this is weird percentage character. It's not rendering properly. <coughs> That's just the way the uh, input and output file streams in C++ work. We can change that format in the future, but probably, you know, it's more efficient to leave it as a default. But we'll cover that one. So we get and set and create a database, but let's destroy it as well. Because <laughs> we've added the functionality, might as well let people use it. So I'm going to put this up around where create is. So if the operation is delete, you must specify a database name. Um, and load the database, db, and then call db.destroy return zero. I.e. it just works. So if I now, oops, helps me compile the damn thing, compile. So now if I run my command, delete, minus name, my DB, I think it's built, hit enter, boom. And if I do ls minus la, that folder's there, but it will be, it's a subfolder, it's not there, cool. So we now can run all these commands in quick succession. I can't remember what, I'll create a database. Set a key, get a key, and delete the database. If we look, the database is no longer there. Boom. So we can do all those commands, and we've got tests for all these things. So even though this is quite a lot of code in this main function, really all it's doing is getting things. We're just calling functions that we've already tested. So if you look at this get, this is probably the most complicated one. To create a reference to a database and then get that if we look at that code literally load db database constructor and get key value same with set key value if we look in our tests literally same here key value set key value get key value so we're not doing anything we've not tested and that's what you want you want your main file and your main project to be nothing that you've not already tested so we've now successfully implemented the whole thing uh, for start to finish, we now have a database. We've got a database that is a key value database. It sets string keys and returns string keys. So in future uh, sessions, we're going to cover exactly what we want to do with that. But uh, thanks for your time today. If you like this, please do um, subscribe. This was quite a long session. I'm going to make the others a lot shorter. This was about an hour ten. I'm going to make the rest of them about half an hour, but I had to get through a lot 
you know, just creating a database would have been a bit boring. We actually had to use it. So, um, but yeah, well, if there's anything that you want to cover in future versions, like different types of key values, if you want a different database model, if you want to learn something about C++ and the things I've deliberately skipped today, do let me know. I'm going to check this coding now so you can get to it. Please subscribe to this series. Thanks a lot for your time and leave a comment.